we had uh, some people uh, that just joined us uh, today and uh, uh, they're probably just getting uh, the time to get some rest right now. Um, so I want to just lay out our uh, plan for uh, our stay in Karbala and what we want to do during this time in addition to Ziyara and Dua. Uh, and then we'll add to that, inshallah, after Arba'in, the plan for the visitation to uh, the remaining uh, shrines in Baghdad and Samarra, inshallah. And uh, I believe there's a possibility we might be able to go back to visit Masjid al-Kufa as well, and it won't be so crowded. So we'll see about that. Uh, but while we are here in Karbala, uh, the main purpose, of course, is to uh, remember and to offer ourselves to Imam Hussain. And there's numerous ways we can do that. Sometimes people, think, people see a tension between different aspects of our obligation to God or to Ahlul Bayt. So for example, people will sometimes say, if I'm an English speaker and I don't understand Arabic, is it better for me to recite the Quran in translation so I understand it, or to recite it in Arabic so that I get the thawab and the barakah of reciting what is the actual scripture? The Quran is not in English. The Quran uh, is in Arabic. And the answer to that is that there is no contradiction or no tension between the two. You should recite it in Arabic because that is the Quran, and you should read it in translation because that is your uh, means of understanding and ideally you should make an effort to learn Arabic at least enough so that you don't need the translation for every sentence. It's one thing to learn Arabic as a language, to read and write and speak. For that you need years of study and I'm still a student of the Arabic language. I'm learning new words or expressions, even today. Uh, but for you to be able to understand du'a Qumail or uh, other du'as of the Imams, and even more so for you to understand the Qur'an, you don't need to study for years. It's a matter of simple vocabulary and simple grammar. So the point is that there's no contradiction. It's not a fight between reading the Qur'an in English so you understand and reading the Qur'an in Arabic so you get the thawab. Because we sometimes have uh, prior suppositions, we see them as being in conflict. The same thing applies to Imam Hussain. There's one group of people, and you might have met them in our communities, they say that don't mix politics or anything with Karbala and the commemoration of Imam Hussain. Don't tell me who is the Yazid of today, who is the Imam Hussain of today, don't tell me about uh, you know, the political struggles or other struggles of Muslims or non-Muslims today because that's not the same as Karbala. And I don't want to dilute Karbala. I don't want to take away from the centrality of Imam Hussein. I don't want to enter into a topic that's controversial. Because, for example, if we talk about current events and somebody talks about Palestine, well, maybe I have one group that I support in Palestine and you have another group, and so we get into a dispute or a disagreement. And so one group of people says that just keep Karbala about Imam Hussein and the tears and the tragedy and the love, and that's all you need. Don't tie it in today. And then another extreme, we have people who say that if you cry about Imam Hussein, but you don't tie it to today, then are you really loyal to Imam Hussein? Because his movement was for justice. His movement was for the establishment of truth, both within our own soul and also within society. And so how can I love Imam Hussein if I don't translate his movement into my own time. It doesn't make sense. And here again, there isn't really a conflict if we truly understand our relationship to Imam Hussein. There is a time just to get lost 
in the connection to the Imam and the tears. You don't need to think about today. You don't need to think about the effects of remembering Karbala in politics and in society and uh, in our own lives. For example, on the day of Ashura, that is a day that the Imams have emphasized. Be present, don't work, unless you know it's an emergency or you're an essential worker saving lives or uh, there is a need personally or for society for you to work, otherwise don't work. And then mourn and mourn as if the tragedy took place today. When a tragedy takes place today, it's fresh and you're not thinking about anything else. Absorb yourself fully into what the tragedy of Karbala means in the events that took place. But then when you do that on Ashura, then Karbala becomes not just a commemoration, not just a remembrance of history, but it becomes your story and your history. Because it's not an event that took place 1400 years ago. It's an event that you are crying for, you are connecting to, you are grieving over, it's present, it's alive. On Ashura, you're just thinking about what Imam Hussain offered and what he suffered. But after Ashura, then Karbala needs to influence my life. If I'm not fair with my own family and my own community, then my connection to Imam Hussain on Ashura is weak. I'm not mixing politics and society with the tragedy. When it's time to mourn, I am just mourning. But part of that mourning is to want to be with Imam Hussain. And being with Imam Hussain means that after Ashura, maybe even that night, maybe even the next day, I'm thinking, where is justice missing in my life? I need to take care of that so I can be with Imam Hussain. Where is concern for the truth missing in my life? And therefore, I need to support the cause of truth. I need to feel that when other people are suffering, even if I'm not, that that is my concern and my issue, not that it's their problem or their concern. So what seems to be a conflict, do you just mourn for Imam Hussain? Or do you tie it to present society? Is not really a conflict. So some people who say that you should tie it to present society, sometimes they don't fully appreciate the power of just the tears and the grief. And sometimes people who see the power of the tears and the grief, they don't see that those tears are also meant to inform our lives today. Otherwise, they are not true tears of connection to Imam Hussain. Because Imam Hussain would shed tears for the marginalized, the hungry, the homeless, the oppressed, the suffering, the unjustly removed from their homes and from their communities. Those are people that Imam Hussain would have prayed for, would have shed tears for, would have connected to. So what do we say is the solution? You do both. You want to cry just for Imam Hussain. And you also want to be like Imam Hussain in working against the injustices in your own life and in your society. And that <coughs> is what resolves that conflict in our community and sometimes in our understanding. So what do we want to do in Karbala? One is we want to talk and understand that tragedy better. And that is through remembering the musibah, the suffering. And also we will recite the du'as and the ziyarat that have come to us from Ahlul Bayt. Inshallah in the mornings we will do ziyarat Ashura before Fajr. That is a very highly emphasized ziyarah by Ahlul Bayt and in particular by ulama uh, up until uh, our present time. And inshallah we will do du'a al-ahad which is a 
covenant and an allegiance to our 12th Imam. So it is a remembrance of where our struggle started and what our allegiance is today. And in addition, inshallah, we'll also do Ziyarat an nahiyah Ziyarat an nahiyah is a lengthy ziyarat and it's not as solid or verifiable as some of our other ziyarat like Ziyarat Ashura or Ziyarat Amirullah or uh, Ziyarat al Jamia, but it is uh, narrated by ulama and it contains some very beautiful expressions of the tragedy of Karbala, what took place and what Ahlul Bayt suffered. And so seeking the reward of Allah and uh, in the hope that it helps us better remember what took place, we will recite that ziyarah together as well. In addition, that's in the mornings, inshallah. In addition, we do want to talk about what does Karbala mean for our lives. When we go back from Karbala, we don't want to just take back tears and memories, souvenirs and prayers, but we want to take back <coughs> a different way of life to be a better Muslim to be a better follower of Imam Hussain. And how we'll do that is by a series of talks and majlis with a mention of the Musiba, discussing what is unique about the Islamic way of life and how that's different from the culture that we might have in Western society, and even maybe sometimes in our Islamic communities. We have culture and expectations that are not always 100% in line with our religious values. And I think that those discussions, uh, and inshallah the back and forth and questions that you may have, will help us to better apply the values of Karbala in our own lives so that uh, we also can say that not only do we love and grieve and have pride that our Imam stood for truth and for justice but that we too follow in the footsteps of our Imam and that we represent those values in our own life. So inshallah, our next session will be right after Salatul Maghrib and we'll meet right here inshallah and we'll begin that discussion of what is unique and different about our Islamic values compared to the secular values uh, that society has around us and compared to sometimes the culture that we have within our Muslim communities, inshallah. So do prepare your own questions or uh, your own points that you would like to add to the discussion and inshallah we'll benefit from each other. One other thing that I want to do and we'll schedule this, I haven't scheduled it yet, is that I want those of you, uh, you who are on the walk to share your thoughts as you were going through the walk, what you witnessed, what you learned, what you gained. Uh, and I think everybody uh, will have seen one aspect of the beauty and the wisdom of this worship. Maybe somebody will have seen something that I did not think about or realize. And those of you who were not on the walk, you also did Ziyarat of Najaf and Karbala, and you may also have certain thoughts, certain uh, insights that came to you during this time, and we can all benefit uh, from hearing from them. So inshallah with that, uh, I will conclude for today. But that's the, uh, the process that we hope to gain from uh, in our time together. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.